We're going to interview a very special young lady. She was uh, one of the stars of the smash hit film, I Can Only Imagine. Her name is Madeline Carroll. Madeline, why don't you come on up here? How are you? Good. good to see you again. So, Madeline, uh, good to have you back again. Thank you. Honey. Last time you were here, we just kind of did it on the fly. Yeah. Uh, you were here to see the <laughs> premiere of the film, which you saw for the first time, right? Yes, I had last time you all saw me, I was like crying, which not far from that right now. Um, but I, uh, I actually came up, did a really last minute interview with yeah. you, and um, it opened up so many doors for me with speaking and sharing my testimony. That five minutes literally just blew open this whole other calling That's that funny. God had on my life. So thank you so much. That's great. That's fantastic. So now this is not something you just started doing. Now you've been acting since you were how old? Since I was three and a half. <laughs> three yeah. and a half. And tell me how you were discovered. It's an incredible story. Um, so I was at a nail salon when I was three and a half with my aunt and um, the lady on the other side of me in the nail salon just heard me talking and thought I was like six or seven years old and she comes around the corner to see who I was and it was just little Lynn Madeline Carroll and um, she ended up giving a card to my aunt um, anyways even though they don't accept kids at six or seven uh, till six or seven and um, she saw me read for her and um, just signed me so God literally like just picked me up and put me on the path at three and a half years old. Um, completely a God dream, not something, you know, I could have sought out at that age. And um, I just always knew it was God's dream for me ever since. God was so faithful um, to me at a young age, and I just was so used to God opening doors for me um, and being just good. And then when I hit 15, it got a lot harder. Um, but up until that point, I was so blessed to work with such amazing, wonderful people. Hollywood is painted out to be a dark place, which it can be, um, but God was really, really good to me up until then. I did a movie with Kevin Costner, and um, he was just such a gentleman. He flew me out on his own dime. I know you're a big Kevin Costner fan, um, to uh, enjoy the premiere and do the publicity tour and everything, and so God just always kind of kept me in this safe circle. Um, the struggle was more for my choices. What was I going to do and, yeah. and uh, walking me through that? So you've been in uh, movies, you're in the Kevin Costner film. What was the name of that film again? Swing Boat. Yeah, Swing Boat. And then you've been in a lot of TV shows. I, uh, my uh, son Jonathan showed me a little clip of you on the show Lost. Yeah. And it's funny, you're, I don't know, how old were you there? Oh my gosh, maybe uh, 12, I but think. But you still look like you, though, you know? I know. You know <laughs> it's just a, a younger version of you, of course, which we tend to look like younger versions of ourselves. But she looked almost identical. Uh, to the way she looks now. So, and you've been in a lot. Tell me, tell us some of the TV shows you've been in. Um, I was in Lie to Me. I was in um, Grey's Anatomy, um, Private Practice, Cold Case, Twice. I'm one of the only people to be on that show twice. Um, <laughs> a bunch of shows, Night Stalker. I did TV mostly my whole entire life. Um, and Swing Vote was my first ever, like, lead role in a film. So, but the, a big moment came for you when you were 10 years old. You were offered a role in, a, in a, what became a big film in Hollywood. And it was a really lucrative offer, well over a million dollars on the table. And you yeah. were offered this role. And uh, we won't say what film it was, but uh, you turned that role down. You're 10 years old and you turned this role down. Tell us why. Um, well, I was actually 11. It was right after okay, Swing Vote. Okay, much but older. Much older. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, uh, yeah, I got offered this amazing opportunity, and um, everyone involved was so so amazing and kind, and so it was really hard to say no, um, not just for, you know, the material offers, but the people that I was going to get to work with. Um, and there's some films that come along that you just know they're going to make you a star, like... They're literally, it's how people paint it out in movies. There are some parts that you just know are just going to change your life. And um, there's all these other aspects to it. Like you won't ever have to audition again, which is like the worst process ever. And um, I got this you offer. You just went to an audition today. Uh, I yeah, I went to one today. Yeah. It's, they're terrible. Um, but um, but I, so it was like one of these life-changing moments. And God literally, you know, kind of laid everything out before me. Um, and I did feel like Daniel, um, actually, you know, when, when they asked him to eat the food and, and he didn't want to eat it. And, um, I, 
I didn't really um, know, you know, how bad it was. Um, it just kind of was resonating in my spirit. I just had this feeling that it wasn't, you know, something that I wanted to do. And um, I actually signed on to do the movie and was going to go ahead and go for it. Um, and my mom didn't have a piece about it. Um, so she was continually praying. And then your mom's here tonight. She's here tonight, my beautiful up. mom and dad. Tell us right your there. mom and dad's name. Stand up, uh, you guys. Don Carroll and Donna Carroll. My brothers are here, too. Yeah. Um, and by the way... You guys are awesome parents to raise a young lady like this, so God bless you for that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so I, I ended up going to church that night after I um, you know, signed on, and, and the pastor randomly called me up and asked me to pray for a little boy to receive hearing. So I got up, and I prayed for him, and I came back to my seat, and I said, Mom, I can't do this movie. And she said, oh, why? And I said, because it just, it's not going to line up with where I think God is going to take me in the future. Yeah. And um, it's that's great. It's just so crazy because the things that I, you know, the choices I made at that age and the things God walked me through at 11 years old, he's like just bringing the whole harvest of it this year. Yeah. And I'm right. getting to share those things and the testimonies and what was done in darkness, he is completely brought to light. Yeah. And so I just <laughs> Thank you. I just I'm you know, amazed. Well, you know, I think, Madeline, you know, I look out on the, in the audience here and I see other young girls, you know, and, and, all, and young boys, too. They're under a lot of pressure, a lot of temptations, compromise, you know, bend the rules here, do this other thing. You're, you're facing heavy-duty compromise opportunities that would make you a lot of money, that would a lot of young people, many people in general, dream of being rich and famous, and, and this is literally in front of you, and you've said no to it. And you've made a principled stand. And, you know, I just applaud you for that. Thank you. And I know the Lord's going to bless you for that. I know it. I just know it, Madeline. Thank okay, you. Okay, so, it. but, of course, you've been in many films. But let, let's talk about I Can Only Imagine. So uh, John Irwin, our mutual friend, is the director of that film. And uh, he cast you. He told me immediately, he says, I sorry, no, this is the girl. In fact, John told me, we asked Madeline to stay on this set for the whole filming because you had such a great effect on everybody else. And I totally understand that. But uh, <laughs> this to me is kind of funny. So after the film's coming out, you were, what were you doing? You were going to theaters and doing what? <laughs> okay, so I was really, really grateful when I got this movie and this opportunity because I had went through this whole period where I didn't know if I was going to act anymore. You know, I'd been doing it my whole life and I just wasn't seeing God in it anymore. And I had this whole moment with God where I just fell on the floor in my bathroom and locked myself in and just started crying out. And I was like, God, I don't understand. Like, I've made all of these choices for you. I have made every decision, everything. I have, I have laid it before you, and I just don't see you rewarding me or opening other opportunities for me. And so I was like, maybe I'm just not hearing you, God. I was like, maybe this isn't what you want of me anymore. And I was like, I just want you to know, Lord, that I love you, and I love your presence more than I love this. And if this is no longer what you have for me, it breaks my heart. But that's okay. I would rather pursue you and do what you have me uh, here for and and it was the hardest thing <laughs> it was it was so hard and um, I had fought my whole life for that and so I laid my dream before God and I just let it die literally and I said here it is and take it and I said two last sentences and I said God if this is still where you have have me and this is still where you've called me then send me something and not only send me something but send me something that would edify you and that's how I'll know that this is where you want me and so then when Imagine came God just showed up and showed out and that's why you saw me crying so hard that day that I saw it because I was that was all going through my head just to give you some backstory and so I went when it came out and bought a bunch of tickets um, sometimes I went with friends sometimes I went completely alone and I would pass out these tickets and um, a lot of people thought I was trying to sell them something it was really awkward um, but uh, I would hide out in the shadows don't judge me and um, <laughs> in the theater hallways and it never seemed to fail there was always at least two or three people that would remain in their seats when the lights would come on and people would just be crying and just couldn't couldn't move and um it was so awesome this one woman i went up and um and talked to her and i was like are you okay and she goes shannon and I, that's I'm the like, name of the character no, you played in the film. <laughs> no i'm madeline <laughs> um but i just want to uh, ask you are you okay and she said you don't understand today i i i was writing a letter to my son and i'm a birth mother 
grandmother and I've never met my son or my grandkids and, and I've been wanting to write this letter for years and so I sat down to write it and I just couldn't do it. So I came to the movie theater to get away for an hour and a half and just escape it and I saw this movie and it has turned my life upside down and I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna reconnect with my son. That's amazing. So, it seems to me, you know, you remind me, you mentioned Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they were, you know, taken captive from Israel, brought into the palace of Nebuchadnezzar, and they were asked to eat from the king's table, and they refused. We don't even really know why. And maybe it be, it's because the food was offered to false gods, but they made a principled stand in what we might call a, a relatively small thing, but then that gave them the strength to make a much more difficult stand when they were asked to bow down before the image that every one of the kingdom was bowing down before. And they were just teenagers, and you're just a, a young girl still. Well, actually, you're 22 now. You're actually an adult, <laughs> aren't you? Yes. But, uh, but you know, you've made a principled stand on the Lord's blessed you, and now you're in a film that, this, this film has been a huge hit. It, it's, it's sold over $85 million in ticket sales. This movie, I can only imagine. Thank you. I'll, Listen to this. This movie outperformed all of the films that were nominated and won Oscars this year. It outperformed all of them. And this is a, a film that is a beautifully crafted film, a well-acted film featuring you. you and, and, of course, Dennis Quaid in a stellar performance and, and many others. But, but the more important thing is this is based on a true story and it's impacting lives like that lady you met in the theater. So, you know, Madeline, there's... A, folks listening, but especially maybe younger people, uh, what would you say to them? Like when, when they're faced with these temptations, these challenges to compromise, to cave in, to do what all the other kids are doing because that's the cool thing to do, you know, what would you say to them to encourage them to, you know, follow the example you've uh, given? Well, um, I would just say more than anything, that's why I brought my Bible up here. Yeah. I spend so much time in my word just Look how beat up this Bible is. It, it is. This is a well-worn Bible. I like that. Uh, thank you. And I, and I know a lot of people, you know, you hear their story and you just think it, it came so easy. But there was so much. I can't stress how much there was that I went through. And God, I just got into my quiet place with the Lord, like it says in Matthew. And I closed the door behind me. And it was just me and him walking through things and just groping for the word of God. And I love that word. Someone told it to me the other day. And it means literally feeling around in the darkness. Yeah. And you don't know if you're doing the right thing. You think that you're doing the right thing. And I just spent so much time with God and got to know him and his character. And, and he just became the forefront of everything for me. It doesn't matter what is next in my career. What matters is, God, what, how can I serve you next? Amen. How can I do for you next? And that's the best advice I can give is just stay in your word. Find yourself, like Greg told me, find myself in the word and, and just exploring stories like Daniel and just seeing situations that you come across in your life that are similar and saying, okay, how did they go through it? And then applying that and just falling in love with the God who loves you so much and has plans for your life and God wants to make you a testimony. God wants to make you a forerunner. And so just just stand in it, grope for it and love him and God will do exceedingly abundantly above all else we could ever ask, think or imagine and my life is testament to that. Madeline Carroll, thank you Madeline. God bless you. <laughs>